Expect positive change. Dig it. Universal basic income. Poor and middle class people gon' get some. Two G's per month to what we running. Bottom up economics, get the money coming. Now dig, time to change the economic system. No more poor and middle class victims. Poor and middle class pockets getting fatter. Money for the least of these is what matters. Bottom up economics is where it begins. Rich folks get profit on the back end. The poor and middle class spend the money. The spent money stimulates the economy. Everyone benefits from bottom to top with poor and middle class cash money drops. We talking about universal basic income. Poor and middle class people gon' get some. Corrupt corporations. What's up, everybody? Welcome to BGMG Radio with Byron Goins and Michelle Goins. Let's get into today's lecture entitled Joe Biden's Socialist Agenda. Socialism has existed in the United States for generations. Now, what I've taught you so far in today's lecture is the government side of the hybrid economic system in the United States. And for some historical facts on this, let's look back in history. Franklin D. Roosevelt administration legislation was signed into law in 1935 called the Social Security Act, which was called socialism by Republicans back in the day. The Social Security Act included aid to families with dependent children, which was established as a federal grant program to states for cash welfare payments for needy children. And people in both political parties throughout the United States benefited and are benefiting today from the passing and signing into law of the Social Security Act of 1935 by Franklin D. Roosevelt, which Republicans called socialism. The United States Department of Health and Human Services website states the following information. Aid to Families with Dependent Children, AFDC, was established by the Social Security Act of 1935 as a grant program to enable states to provide cash welfare payments for needy children who had been deprived of parental support or care because their father or mother was absent from the home, incapacitated, deceased, or unemployed. The Department of Health and Human Services website further states, the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act of 1996 replaced AFDC, AFDC Administration, the Job Opportunities and Basic Skills Training Program, and the Emergency Assistance Program with a cash welfare block grant called the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program. As the Department of Health and Human Services website states, aid to families with dependent children was changed to Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, or in other words, TANF, in 1996 through legislation entitled the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act of 1996. This legislation change had more requirements and inhibiting factors associated with it, as more hardship was placed on the least of these. As the Department of Health and Human Services website also states, key elements of TANF include a lifetime limit of five years, 60 months, on the amount of time a family with an adult can receive assistance funded with federal funds, increasing work participation rate requirements, which states must meet, and broad state flexibility on program design. Now, the TANF program still exists today, and changes still need to be made to the program to provide maximum benefits for the least of these but it's going to take the right people to be elected to office to bring the needed change to the social programs to provide maximum benefits for the least of these. So remember this at election time, because mass numbers of politicians need to be voted out of office, Republicans and Democrats, both political parties, Republicans and Democrats. People need to be elected to office who will work to change the current rich-based 
trickle-down economic system to a least of these based trickle-up economic system, or in other words, a poor and middle-class based trickle-up economic system. People should be elected to office who support $2,000 in monthly universal basic income for poor and middle-class people. People should be elected to office who support a universal health care system in the United States. People should be elected to office who support a $22 per hour federal minimum wage. $15 per hour is not enough. And people all throughout the United States know this. And it's time to get the federal minimum wage to where it should be for poor and middle class people working today. Most people don't know that the federal minimum wage should have been $22 per hour in 2012, when analyzed in accordance with employee productivity. Employee productivity went up throughout the years, wages remained stagnant, and corporate bought and paid for politicians have not acted on increasing the federal minimum wage. Folks have been working hard throughout the years, and their productivity has been going up ultimately benefiting the capitalists and their corporations to the detriment of the workers, who are the least of these, and who are working for low wages, which enable corrupt corporations to profit exponentially from the hard work performed by the least of these. It's time to raise the federal minimum wage to $22 per hour. And once people are elected to office who agree with these demands, and others that benefit the least of these. Then the move towards the least of these economic system in the United States can make progress. And when I say a least of these economic system, I'm talking about changing both sides of the United States hybrid economic system so it benefits the least of these. And as a result, the rich will get their benefits on the back end through the profits generated as the least of these spend their $2,000 per month in universal basic income and work income of $880 per week at $22 per hour for 40 hours in a week. In total, the least of these, with $2,000 per month in universal basic income and a job earning $22 per hour at 40 hours per week, will individually receive $69,760 annually in income, which will address United States poverty in the way that it should be addressed. But it's going to take politicians with the least of these economic mindset to change the economic system so it benefits the least of these instead of the rich. And it has been proven through past and current politicians that the only way least of these demands will become law in the United States is for people with the least of these economic mindset to get elected to office. House members and senators earn $174,000 annually. House majority and minority leaders earn $193,400 annually. The Speaker of the House earns $223,500 annually. The Vice President of the United States earns $230,000 seven hundred dollars annually and the president of the united states earns four hundred thousand dollars annually so we're talking about good paying jobs here and i'm sure there are people out there who would like to earn these salaries and are willing to work hard for the least of these a least of these crew is needed throughout united states federal government to change the economic system to one that benefits the least of these Now, if you have a least of these mindset, agree with the least of these proposed legislation that I've mentioned, and will work to make this proposed least of these legislation law in the United States, you may want to consider running for elected office in your district if your current representative doesn't care about the least of these, or states that they care about the least of these and has not made a move to offer and push any legislation for the least of these that would assist in turning the United States economic system into a poor and middle class based least of these trickle up economic system instead of the current 
rich-based, trickle-down economic system that has hurt the poor and middle class and increased the wealth of the rich in the United States. Because it is time to dispose of trickle-down economics and replace it with trickle-up economics. And politicians who are not willing to work in this capacity should be voted out of office as soon as possible. So as I stated, a least of these crew is needed in federal government to ensure that least of these agenda is passed and signed into law. Congress can make changes to the Federal Reserve Act as needed. And the Federal Reserve money creation out of thin air system should be utilized as soon as possible to end poverty in the United States. $2,000 in United States federal government guaranteed universal basic income for all poor and middle class United States citizens at least 18 years of age, funded through the Federal Reserve System, should be passed by both houses of Congress and signed into law immediately. And in order to bring this to fruition in the United States, government is going to have to be filled with people with the least of these economic mindset. How many of you are struggling financially? How many of you have struggled financially in the past? How many of you are working for less than $22 per hour? How many of you feel like the corporation you're providing low wage labor for has been getting over on you since you've been working for them? How many of you know people who are struggling financially? How many of you know people who are homeless? How many of you have friends and family attempting to live on a fixed income that is not enough for them to live on? How many of you have had enough of the government placing money in the hands of the rich through trickle-down economic policies while your friends and family are struggling financially to make it? It is time for an economic change in the United States and trickle-up economics is a necessity. Dig what I'm saying here. The way the economic system is currently running, Republican tax cuts for the rich decrease tax revenue generation and add to the deficit, thereby causing the federal government to need an operating cash loan funded through the Federal Reserve purchases of securities with money created out of thin air through computer keystrokes. Once the operating cash loan is done, it is added to the deficit, and an increased deficit means an increased national debt. So in essence, Republican tax cuts for the rich added to the deficit and the national debt, but placed more money into the hands of the rich to the detriment of the poor and middle class who support corporations through low-wage labor, while at the same time purchasing high-priced goods and services as they support corporations on both sides of the economic equation. Yet, they get none of the money given to the corporations through tax cuts for the rich as a result of stock buybacks, offshore tax havens, and other corrupt schemes that have enabled the rich to get over on the poor and middle class, which must be stopped and changed by filling the United States federal government with people with the least of these economic mindset, by electing them to office to replace current members of the United States federal government. So as I stated, if you support having a least of these economic system in the United States and agree with the least of these economic proposals I've outlined here, you may want to consider running for federal government elective office. The new social programs will reinforce the socialism side of the United States federal government and benefit the least of these. For instance, as I stated, $2,000 in monthly United States federal government guaranteed universal basic income for poor and middle class citizens at least 18 years of age will benefit the poor, middle class, and rich, as the rich will get their financial benefit on the back end out of the profit they generate through economic stimulation 
when the poor and middle class spend the money, as this will be a demand-based economic system which will force corporations to hire workers to meet demand so they can earn profits, which will be increased as a result of a trickle-up economic system. Also, on the regulated capitalism private side, more regulations will be put in place to benefit the least of these and to stop corrupt corporations from running roughshod over the poor and middle class. As I've proven, the United States has been utilizing socialism for generations in government to help the least of these. As I've proven, the Franklin D. Roosevelt administration gave grants to the states for the cash welfare payment system called Aid to Families with Dependent Children. Now, remember what I taught you earlier about the government socialism side of the United States hybrid economic system. The United States hybrid economic system is made up of two parts, which are the government side and the private side. The government side includes all of the social programs and the collective or governmental ownership and administration of the means of production and distribution of goods or through the people of the United States, through their elected representatives. In other words, the means of production and the distribution of goods are collectively owned and administered by the people of the United States through their elected representatives. Also, the people of the United States collectively contribute to the system through their taxes, and it's a common good system, as the people of the United States collectively contribute to the common good of all, as their taxes fund the social programs. This is the government side of the hybrid economic system in the United States, which irrefutably proves the fact that socialism exists in the United States government. Did you dig today's broadcast? Contact us at bgmgradio.com and let us know. If you're listening on YouTube, click subscribe so you can be notified about new uploads. Thank you for listening to BGMG Radio with Byron Goins and Michelle Goins. Economics is where it begins. Rich folks get profit on the back end. The poor and middle class spend the money. The spent money stimulates the economy. Everyone benefits from bottom to top with poor and middle class cash money drops. We talking about universal basic income. Poor and middle class people gonna get some. Corrupt.